So this is an essay on conflict in Pidgin English and you're still not sure what conflict is, think of the idea of something versus something else. So there are two types of conflict within the novel that you could refer to. So there is the external conflict and the internal conflict. So the external conflict are things like Harry versus gang culture, Harry versus the language barriers that he faces. Um, whereas the internal conflicts are the idea that Harry is uh, both appalled by can culture, but also it's something he wants to be a part of, so that's something that goes on within him. You've also got like the wider societal um, external conflicts, sort of teenagers versus adults, um, social deprivation uh, versus other things, immigrants versus non-immigrants, so, so things like that. There's lots of types of conflict in this novel. So this essay goes through some of the main ideas uh, taken from the novel with some key quotations that you might want to take and use for your revision tonight. So, Stephen Kelman's Pigeon English could be seen as a criticism about modern life and how conflict infiltrate, infiltrates the daily lives of young people and the society in which they live. So a short uh, introduction um, to emphasise and, and to outline what I'm going to talk about in this essay. And remember, infiltrates means it creeps in, it gets into every single area. So a really nice high-level word for you to use. So, firstly, Kelman chooses to set his novel in Peckham, a notorious area of London where criminal and drugs culture are rife. So notorious means famous for perhaps the wrong reasons, and rife means everywhere. It's really, really high levels of it. Harry is surrounded by conversations about drugs and reports these through his innocent first-person narrative to the reader. When he hears, I got the cheese, Kelman uses dramatic irony to demonstrate that innocent people are surrounded by a culture of drugs, gangs and conflict that they are unable to escape. So, we've taken that quotation, we've analysed it, we've got a technique there, dramatic irony, when the audience knows something that the people within the novel, within the story, don't know. This idea is further emphasised by the cyclical structure of the novel. The repetition of you could see the blood at the end of the novel reflects the idea that characters are trapped within this violent society where their innocence is corrupted by the world around them. Kelman appears to be criticising the society in which modern teenagers are subjected to high levels of violence and the gang culture they are a part of. The cyclical structure amplifies the idea that they are unable to escape the society that they are a part of. So it's a little bit repetitive there, but you can see where... Um, this person is going with this essay. Kelman uses several references to the wars faced in society in which Harrison lives. If we see the novel as a microcosm of society as a whole, we might interpret that Kelman is highlighting that all humans create conflicts and are not able to solve these. So microcosm is a little part of society. Again, a really high level word that you can put in there. Kelman uses the images image of the playground burning to emphasise that childhood has come to an end and that crime and violence can easily bring about the end of innocence. So you don't necessarily have to have a quotation um, from that moment as long as you can refer to it as part of the novel. Harry states that the playground was dying but nobody was trying to save it, which could be a metaphor for the death of innocence within society. Perhaps Kelman is questioning why these things were allowed to happen and whose responsibility it is to rescue it. So I haven't just asked the question there, I've put it into part of the sentence. Kelman also uses the theme of conflict to explore power struggles within society. Even Dean, who is picked on by the Dell Farm crew who steal his pound coin, tells a small kid's playing on a mattress to piss off or will batter you. The use of violent verbs such as batter emphasises that all children seek to gain control. This is further emphasised by the imperative piss off. And remember, imperative is like a command. This is echoed by the pigeon's comment that violence always came too easy to humans, and Kelman is commenting on the idea that all humans seek to manipulate those weaker than themselves. Therefore, if this is allowed, their innocence is corrupted by their own internal desires. This is accentuated by the last line of the book when Harry comments that all babies look the same. We could interpret that it is society that corrupts young people as they are all born with the same potential for good, reflecting Julius' as advice to Harry to stay good for as long as he can. So taking lots of quotations from different parts of the novel will really help to support and emphasise what you're really trying to say and bring out in this answer. 
Furthermore, the conflict within the novel is exemplified throughout the novel by referencing racism. Kelman uses dramatic irony when Harry misunderstands why his mother has been called a fuzzy wuzzy and is degraded by her patients. It suggests that Harry, an immigrant, is surrounded by a high degree of racism and might find it impossible to work out how he belongs to the society. He even begins to use racist language when he calls Somalis pirates, suggesting that negativity can infiltrate even most innocent people's thoughts and mindsets. Additionally, the pigeon states that you go to such lengths to keep us out. If we imagine the pigeon as a metaphor for unwanted members of society, it might reflect how outsiders such as immigrants are treated within society as a whole. And the fact that Harry is an immigrant within the society creates several conflicts for him. So Kalman seeks to contrast the quiet religious life in Ghana with the loud, vibrant, criminal and almost secular life in London. The reader sees Harry struggle with understanding different religions and how he seeks out the pigeon as his guardian rather than looking directly for God. Kelman uses the images of the broken church windows to indicate that Harry's struggles with religion also filter through society as a whole and that he seems to question whether a lack of belief in God is causing the criminal behaviour we see throughout the novel. So lots and lots of stuff in there that brings that point to the foreground and taking the idea of fuzzy wuzzy compared to the Somali. So you've seen that in other videos if you've watched those as well. And then that image of the broken church windows as well. What is Calvin trying to question with that? The reader also sees many internal conflicts faced by Harry as the novel progresses. At the beginning of the novel, Harry writes about each of the things he sees in short, sharp bursts of description. This perhaps allows the reader to feel the same confusion to the senses felt by Harry as he experiences London for the first time. Later in the novel, Harry faces a conflict over whether he should admire or criticise the Dell Farm crew. He admires them for stealing the pound from Dean, yet feels very sorry for Dean. This conflict highlights the peer pressure felt by children within society. Overall, Kelman's novel can be read as a criticism of the way conflict infiltrates society. Harry is surrounded by a number of wars and conflicts that ultimately end his life. If we see Harry as a metaphor for all young people and the innocence within them, we can see the issues raised by Kelman concerning our society, and perhaps we can start to address these so that our inner children are not destroyed. So a nice, succinct conclusion there to bring up your argument together. So again, you could write about two or three moments where conflict is apparent and explain those away within your answer or you can write it more like this and join those elements together so th this would give you a, a grade seven a grade eight response um, and if you can just mention some of the things in this essay they'd be really really good thank you for listening